Hello, good evening, everybody. Guten Abend, alles. I'd like to talk here in German, but I can't. Ich nicht spreche Deutsch. So we'll continue in, in English. Um, who am I? Uh, I will be talking about immigration to Klichaus. It's a practical guide uh, based on my experience, experience of the company I'm working in, and um, uh, what we did in order to implement a huge Klichaus installation. So who am I? I am software developer, actually, with 20 years of uh, experience. And um, in recent years, I work as a director of engineering in Live Street. And in Live Street, we uh, migrated to Clickhouse. And using this experience, uh, we created a company, Altimity, in order to help others to migrate to Clickhouse as well. I'm also a passionate skier and um, taking it done in Aikido, if you're curious. So what is Live Street? Live Street is an ad tech company. It's an ad exchange uh, with uh, its own ad server, RTB, DMP, and all these free letter abbreviations uh, in uh, online advertising. We have about 10 uh, billion events per day, mostly bid requests, uh, that uh, s some of them end up with impressions, click conversions, etc. Um, the average size of event is 2K, but it's probably optimistic. It's actually bigger. And we have to keep uh, three months of data, uh, of detailed data uh, at least, and uh, some data to keep forever. This is a company. If you do a simple math here, you will get that the data si size is about uh, two petabytes. And it constantly grows. Uh, so in Live Street, uh, other three years, so it's a company with 10 years of uh, uh, history and 10 years of analytics infrastructure, we tried and used many different uh, solutions, uh, including some uh, MySQL uh, brands, uh, some open source column stores like Infinity, MoneyDB, and Infobrite. We uh, evaluated a couple of commercial solutions like Paraxel, uh, Greenplum, um, Vertica, Snowflake DB, it's cloud uh, database on Amazon. We used Oracle at some point. Um, but um, all of that uh, didn't work well. If, uh, sometimes uh, they were technically uh, not ready for our use case. Sometimes they were very expensive uh, to run. And uh, so ClickHouse appeared, and we decided to try it. So before you go, and uh, this is what uh, you will have to do if you are going to have uh, ClickHouse uh, deployment in a company, you need to do a couple of things. First, you need to confirm your use case, that ClickHouse suits your needs. Second, you need to check benchmarks. A lot of benchmarks are available on internet already, not, not just from Yandex. Um, but not just check, but run your own benchmarks using your data and using your, your use cases. And this is very important. Next, you need to look at the ClickHouse limitations, not features. Alexei talked mostly about features, but ClickHouse has some limitations that may be uh, sometimes very problematic to deal with. And next, you need to make a proof of concept in order to understand if it, it works for you for no or not. So in Live Street, uh, the use case is pretty much like Yandex. So we have even stream analysis, so we have stream all the data. We need to um, measure publisher and advertiser performance, uh, campaign, campaign creative performance optimization. Uh, we have real-time programmatic bidding based on this data and also DMP. So this all kind of stuff Yandex also have. And that's why we thought one year ago that our use case is pretty close to Yandex. So ClickHouse should work for us. And requirements-wise, this is probably I repeat myself a little bit, we have 10 billion events, uh, 500 dimensions per event. Uh, we need to run uh, ad hoc reports on three months of detailed data with low latency, low latency of the data, so no, no huge batches and delays, and low query latency. And also high availability is very important if you run a production system, you can't avoid that. Now let's look briefly about at ClickHouse limitations and see what we can do with that. ClickHouse has no transactions. Uh, no constraints. If you come from database world, it, you could be surprised. It, it only has eventual consistency. It's, you can't guarantee that your data is consistent across the cluster. 
Uh, no updates deletes probably next year. Uh, no, uh, there were no, no nulls when we started, and that was a problem, but nulls has been added. That's good news. No seconds and no plans to add them. And no implicit time conversions, probably now they uh, started to appear a little bit. Uh, the SQL is not standard with uh, some specific syntax and uh, some missing uh, features. Uh, no partitioning by any column to the moment, only monthly, uh, but we'll probably have it soon. And no enterprise operation tools. So uh, basically, when you see this list of limitations, uh, what do you think about ClickHouse and uh, doing a system like that? Uh, do, do, doing, doing a production system with all these limitations, especially if it came from the uh, database, database ground. It's kind of crazy, yes? It's not very easy uh, system to work with. So main challenges if you start uh, um, implementing your ClickHouse system is to uh, develop efficient schema that uses ClickHouse best and uh, uh, overcomes or workarounds limitations. Uh, you have to do reliable data ing ingestion and data load. It's not very easy as it sounds. Uh, sharding a replication is a key to performance and reliability, and you need to get very familiar with that. Certainly, you can run a, on a single box, um, but if, if, you, if we're talking about huge production system, it's not the case. And client uh, interfaces is a real pain uh, due to a SQL dialect. It's good at Tableau now supports ClickHouse, but if you add joins, it doesn't work. So uh, let's talk a little bit about theory. What is multidimensional analysis uh, and what is analytics about? This is a simple query with a few uh, dimensions and uh, some uh, sums calculated. And it's often represented as a cube uh, with uh, it's multi it's multi it's three dimensionals uh, on the picture, but it's actually multi dimensional. And uh, you slice a piece of from the cube with your filter and then project it to uh, the smaller set of dimensions in order to get the query result. <coughs> and it's often modeled as a star schema, uh, which consists of facts uh, and uh, dimensions, where the main table is uh, at the middle with some additional uh, data, uh, data around. And there are two approaches to the star schema design. Uh, first is uh, called denormalized approach, and this is what Alexei is advocating to. When you have a single table, so it's everything simple, everything flat. Uh, it's very simple to uh, write queries because you have no joins. However, there are some issues with that. Data can be, ch can be changed in the huge table. And the storage is sub-efficient because you have to, d to keep uh, a lot of m much more data in the normalized form. And the queries are sub-efficient as well sometimes because of the same, same issue. If you go with a normalized uh, design, then you, you have to keep multiple tables, so it's not uh, very good sometimes. Uh, queries become more complex, um, but probably more familiar uh, to, to uh, SQL uh, developers. Um, However, what you get here, that data in dimensions can be changed because dimension tables are usually small and you can reload them completely. You, you get efficient storage and more efficient queries. A traditional approach to normalized schema design is uh, doing uh, separate tables and joins. However, with ClickHouse, it doesn't work very good. Due to limited support of joins, uh, it's only one level, and you have to cascade to subselects if you have multiple levels. And also, tables in ClickHouse are not updatable, so you can't update, even small ones. If you want to reload completely, you can, you can have some queries returning no data, right? And ClickHouse uh, uh, proposes its own approach to, to, the, to this. Uh, this is called external dictionaries, which is, in a essence, just a Value, um, key value hash map uh, or family of hash map that allows you to uh, get any uh, data instead of joins. And the main good about the, uh, this is that it's um, you can avoid joins and you can refresh them. So this is an example of a SQL query using join and using a dictionary call. Uh, as you see, um, it doesn't look very uh, very neat, but it's, uh, it's pretty easy, right? A dictionary can have multiple sources, 
uh, traditionally you, you, m you may want to have some uh, other database, MySQL or any ODBC data source, but you also can have files, scripts, and HTTP services, which adds uh, extra flexibility to that. Uh, dictionaries to the moment are configured at a separate part of ClickHouse configuration. You can, you can move it uh, to separate dictionary, but it's still a configuration that's not very convenient. And this is uh, an example of configuration structure. And you can update them. Uh, the, the default behavior is to update them by timer, but uh, by update I mean refresh uh, the data completely from the source. It's uh, automatic for my sum, and you can use invalidate query uh, for the last couple of months um, in order to refresh it when something changes in your data. Also, there are ways to reload uh, dictionaries by request. Uh, but before uh, this feature has been added, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we, we had to manually touch config files in order to reload dictionaries. A warning here is that if you have a huge cluster with a lot of dictionaries and a lot of nodes, uh, ClickHouse creates a separate connection to the um, database for every dictionary from every node, so there could be a huge number of connections and a huge load if dictionaries are updated uh, simultaneously. There are a few restrictions th that you should be aware about. Uh, dictionaries, uh, dictionary keys, standard keys are only unsigned int 64. Click, uh, Yandex is a very um, positive company. Uh, when we started to work with ClickHouse, they didn't support negative primary keys at all. So it's very, very positive. Uh, they fixed that bug very quickly, but still uh, there are some remains exist, yeah, for, exam for example, in dictionaries. If you want uh, to have keys of different data types, you can do that with uh, some uh, extra configuration steps. But by default, it's, it's this. On the full refresh is possible. It might be a problem if you have the huge uh, external dictionary, say, mm, several ma millions of rows, and full refresh may, may, be huge, uh, may generate huge load on the uh, source table. And every cluster has its own copy of the dictionary uh, that may lead to inconsistencies between your nodes. Currently, it's XML configuration, and definitely, if it would be part of the schema and defined using DDL, it would be much more convenient. Uh, and uh, this is in some secret plans of Yandex uh, to do stand almo almost this. So we'll see. Pros and cons. Uh, what is good? in dictionaries. No joins, uh, updatable, and always in memory for, for, si for simple layouts. So this is very fast. Uh, the cons are that it's not a part of the schema and somewhat inconvenient syntax. This is what, uh, what I see as pros and cons. But uh, I can repeat it, that dictionaries is the right way to do star schema in ClickHouse. Now let's talk a little bit about tables. Uh, tables characterized by engines, how you shard and distribute them, and uh, replication strategy. ClickHouse supports multiple engines. It's, uh, it's much like MySQL uh, that supports different database engines. Uh, ClickHouse uh, has the same um, semantics. So engine, uh, engine specifies how table is stored and how, so, so, so a, a lot about the table. So there are several in-memory engines, uh, the memory, uh, buffer, join, and set. Memory is often used for temporary tables. It's uh, very convenient for that. There are a few on-disk uh, engines. Um, Merge tree family is the most important. There are a few interface engines, which uh, do not represent the tables, but uh, represent the interface to another tables. Distributed, merge, and dictionary are examples of these engines. And there are special purposes engines which uh, are used to create additional uh, database objects, like view, materialized view. There is even engine null. You can push any data to that, and it will just disappear, with side effects, probably. Um, I will skip the merge tree slide. Uh, if, you, if you're interested in how merge tree works, uh, there is excellent um, presentation on ClickHouse internals. Uh, you can find it, I guess. 
and it explains its much more detail. But merge tree is the most important entry in ClickHouse. It should be used for most of use cases. If you want data to be stored on the disk and accessed very fast. And actually, it's not just the engine. It's, uh, it's a full family of engines uh, which are built on top of merge tree. Uh, you can have replacing merge tree that somewhat emulates updates. You can have collapsing merge tree for the same purpose. You may have summon and aggregation merge, merge trees to perform aggregation. This is very convenient with materialized views. And you can have replicated uh, tables for all of these uh, types of merge trees. Now let's talk briefly about data load. Um, Clical supports multiple load formats. Actually, it's quite symmetric. You can uh, export data to the same formats uh, and import to the same sort of set, set, set of formats. So the most convenient for data load are uh, common formats like CSV, TSV, and uh, some sort of JSONs. There's also native binary, which is probably the fastest, because Clickhaus do, uh, doesn't need to do extra parsing. Uh, the data load is possible to do house client or um, Clickhouse APIs. There is some error handling, and you can skip errors uh, if you want to. And you, uh, by default, it's uh, you never skip errors because you have you, you want to have all your data consistent. There are some simple transformations possible during the load, uh, so it's much more convenient to do it uh, using some temporary table stage. And also, it's possible to load locally to your local server or to the distributed uh, table, and ClickHouse will redistribute your data for you to, to the different servers. Some tricks uh, for, the, for data load um, that pop up in my mind. So first, and uh, important, that ClickHouse loves big blocks. So you need to, to put the huge enough blocks for the, for the good performance. Uh, by default, it has insert block size of one, mi one million uh, rows. Uh, is that insert is atomic if you insert the data of this block size. However, there is a caveat here. If you read documentation carefully, you'll figure out that it's only for API and not for ClickHouse client, uh, the utility that you will probably use most. So how to uh, load data atomically uh, if you're using ClickHouse client if you and if you want to uh, have different, uh, different data size. So we come up with the following approach. You first load data to a temporary table and you reload on error. So if you error, you just drop everything and start loading um, from the beginning. Then you set max block size, another parameter to size of your data. The max block size, it specifies um, how much data ClickHouse reads from the, uh, from the source. And it happens that uh, if, uh, if you have insert select, then, uh, then the same data that ClickHouse reads, uh, it uses as a block to insert. And this is atomic. This is what we got. So you insert into temporary table from temporary table, and you get atomic, atomic insert. And what if uh, you have no big blocks? Uh, sometimes you have a lot of uh, small, small consumers or small producers that write a little bit of data, and ClickHouse has support for that as well. Uh, this is, um, first of all, if you don't have two, two huge uh, insert rate, it's okay. Uh, just insert one record, one second, it will work. Not very efficient, but work. But if you have uh, the huge enough rate, uh, you, can, you can use buffer tables, which buffer, ta buffer data inside of ClickHouse and spill to um, the permanent table uh, when some threshold is met. Uh, the next, uh, the power of materialized views. So materialized views is a very powerful functionality of ClickHouse that allows you to do uh, online aggregation. Uh, technically, it's, it's just a table, uh, so it has all uh, the characteristics of a table, like, like engine, replication, and whatsoever. It's updated synchronously with your inserts uh, to the uh, main table. And if you have Simon and aggregate and merge tree, you, you have consistent aggregation. You just put the data in your uh, raw data table, fuck table, and instantly you have data aggregated in your materialized views, and you can accept them uh, with uh, your client tools. Alters are very problematic. Um, I'm not sure if the uh, house team is going to do any of that or not, but it's okay. 
So this is typical data load diagram, uh, diagram when you have um, data going from log files, uh, which are usually huge enough. It's loaded first to temporary tables, then it goes to uh, permanent tables with uh, materialized views being updated uh, automatically by ClickHouse. At the same time, you may have data uh, loaded to your buffer tables and then again loaded to permanent tables. And dictionaries are updated absolutely independently of everything else. And this is just one node. If you have multiple nodes, every node may have the same, um, same data load diagram. Updates and deletes, if you're curious, um, so ClickHouse doesn't support updates and de deletes. However, dictionaries are refreshable. And also replacing and columns and merge trees help you if you need to update your data sometimes, but you're fine if the update is not instant. So uh, how does it work? For replacing merge tree, uh, the ClickHouse eventually replaces uh, the row with the same primary key. So you can insert uh, the data with the same primary key, but different values at other columns, and ClickHouse will eventually replace it during merge operation. If you want your uh, result to be instant, you can use select final, which is sub-efficient, but uh, still works for small tables. Collapse and merge tree is uh, uh, somewhat uh, similar but different. It's very good explained in Yannick's blog, um, blog article, uh, how it works. So if you're interested, go to Yannick's blog, which, by the way, wasn't advertised by Alexei at the page of where you want to find, wh where we can find interesting information. Uh, and the last but not least is partitions. Partitions are usually used for uh, data management. It's just delete data and forget about that. Or move it to somewhere in order to restore it uh, other day if you need to. Sharding and replication is a key to performance and reliability. Uh, sharding and distribution uh, give you performance. Uh, what is sharding? Sharding when you uh, partition your data into small chunks placed on the different uh, servers. Uh, and access it in a distributed way. So usually you want to do it for big tables, like five tables, materialized views, uh, but dimension tables or any or, or dictionary say should be local and um, replicated to every node. So every node should have a s same copy of this data in order for joins and uh, uh, where conditions using this data to work efficiently on, on the nodes without uh, having to go to the um, distributed table level. Um, and replication gives you reliability. Uh, two, uh, two or three replicas per shard is uh, what you need to have. Two is uh, probably not enough if you lose one replica and you want to restore it. Uh, so your uh, remaining replica becomes overloaded. Uh, so it depends on your load and scenario. And ClickHouse works uh, more or less okay in cross data center environment especially if your data centers are close enough. Uh, in our experience, it doesn't, it doesn't work well when you have one data center in Europe and another is in somewhere in Silicon Valley. It's, uh, it's a long way. But on the East Coast, America East Coast, it's already, it's already good. Um, but when I say it's not, uh, it's not working very, uh, very well, I mean that uh, there could be replication delays um, and replication queues, but it still, it still, it still works. At the, and again, it depends on the load. We have very huge load. So how distributed query works, for, for instance? Uh, your query goes to any of ClickHouse nodes, and uh, this is called a uh, node initiator. It, it then rewrites a query and translates it to uh, shard nodes, uh, executes as much as possible at every uh, separate shard node, returns uh, the intermediate results to query initiator, and query initiator performs additional processing, for, for, for instance, additional grouping and, and aggregation, and returns result to the client. Uh, replication. Uh, ClickHouse is very, very flexible on replication, so you can have per table topology configuration. <laughs> and it gives you an ability to, to do any, any sort of setup. A replication is managed by Zookeeper, uh, and by managed I mean that uh, ClickHouse replicates by itself, but Zookeeper uh, used to communicate the state, what needs to be replicated, what parts of the data. Um, okay. Here's an example of, uh, it's not pro probably not very good picture, two data, two, two replicas or two data centers. Uh, it has 
uh, one cluster of uh, four shards replicated uh, to uh, in our data center, and also it has uh, uh, the data which is named T. It's uh, replicated to every node, so it's the same copy uh, exists at every server. So you can have it at the same setup, or you can have it uh, all kind of mixed configuration if you need. SQL. SQL is a kind of pain, actually. Uh, ClickHouse supports basic SQL syntax, and this is great. A support of JSON, uh, it supports J joins, uh, but uh, kind of non-standard syntax, uh, and no BI tools know about the syntax yet. Mm -hmm. uh, on, a, on, a, an, on another side, uh, ClickHouse supports aliasing everywhere, so you can alias not just columns or tables, but you can alias expressions or just part of expressions everywhere and uh, do uh, all kinds of substitutions later. ClickHouse does all kinds of substitutions. It has very, very um, powerful uh, arrays and nested data types, which supports lambda expressions, uh, array join, so you can uh, put arrays into rows, rows and vice versa. Very, very powerful. I know that uh, analysts uh, love it, functionality, and we'll probably see, see later today how to use it. Um, approximate queries, uh, uh, if uh, ClickHouse supports approximate uniques and uh, sampling, and a lot of domain-specific functions, and some basic analytic functions as well. So this is pretty huge list of uh, uh, things that are supported, but this is non-standard SQL, and there are some limitations. So join syntax is different. Uh, first of all, uh, ClickHouse requires any or all to be added to any join. Uh, any means uh, and this comes from the fact that ClickHouse doesn't have true primary keys. Primary key is just sort order, and it doesn't gra guarantee uniqueness. So any stands for, for the case when you join the data, and you want uh, the first matching record from the right, uh, from the right table uh, to be returned. And, and all stands for the standard uh, SQL syntax that all matching rows will be uh, returned from the right table. ClickHouse support only using and doesn't support uh, doesn't support support on, and this requires in some cases to rewrite part of the query in order to uh, column names uh, to match on both sides. And uh, multiple joins can be supported only using nesting. Um, another limitations uh, are the dictionaries which are supposed to be replacing the joins. Uh, they finally replace the join but they're not supported by any BI tools at the moment. Probably Tabix is the only one that has some idea of what it is. Uh, ClickHouse is very strict for data types. It doesn't have uh, um, implicit time conversions in most cases. So you have to use a lot of type conversion functions in your SQL. Uh, no transaction statements, updates, and release. This is what we talked about that. And no windowed analytical functions at the moment, but uh, these are on the plans as well. So these all limitations make it very difficult to use ClickHouse as a backend for uh, many existing BI tools. And we spent a lot of time rewriting our own uh, middleware in order to talk to ClickHouse dialect. However, it's still possible <laughs> to do. And uh, there are fewer uh, open source uh, products that already support ClickHouse dialect, uh, including uh, Grafana and Superset. And if you don't use um, joins, and if you have denormalized schema with no joins and dictionaries, then you're fine. So you can use any tool. But if you have star schema, you have to do something. A few notes about hardware deployments. Um, uh, data load is CPU intensive, so you need to, to have more cores. And ClickHouse scares linearly on cores, both on data load and query execution. Uh, this is very easy to demonstrate if you need to. Uh, queries on another uh, site uh, are usually disk intensive because you need to read a lot of data from your disk, so faster disk usually help. ClickHouse works fine on SATA. It's, it doesn't require uh, anything fancy, but still. Huge sorts are memory intensive, so more memory are needed if you have really uh, a, l a lot of high cardinality uh, columns and you want to sort on, on them. So what we came came to, uh, we're using 10 to 12 SATA, SATA drives in RAID, RAID, RAID 10, and we tried uh, SAS and SSDs to see if there is a performance improvement. Yes, there is a performance improvement. This is expected, uh, but uh, it's uh, probably 
you have twice performance improvement for the and half of capacity for the twice price. So it's not very cost efficient so far. Uh, so so uh, what else? Zookeeper is very important. By the way, do you know that click? Ah, yes, I talked that ClickHouse requires Zookeeper, but this is uh, sometimes frightening for many people. They they are afraid of Zookeeper. Uh, with our experience, Zookeeper is not a problem at all. Uh, it's very stable product, so you install it and uh, you don't need to administer it almost. But if you have cross data center setup, uh, we uh, found that ClickHouse work better when the keeper is located in one data center um, because uh, it takes a long time to uh, find the distributed quorum when the keeper is uh, distributed at different nodes. Okay, uh, let's revisit our main challenges. So design efficient schema, done. Uh, sharding replica replication, okay. Reliable data ingestion and client interfaces. This is what we had to do, and it actually took a lot of time uh, based on the uh, scope of our project, and based on that, this, this is a working business. We had to move the working business to an absolutely new platform. So there, there are some timelines. We started at June 2016. ClickHouse was just announcing open source something on like June 16. Um, or 17, and on June 19, I checked records today, we started uh, to, evaluate, to evaluate it three days after announcing open source. Um, in August, we had proof of concept, so we ran our benchmarks in two months, uh, we um, tested our data load works, etc., and the performance was absolutely okay, uh, on par of uh, or better with what we could expect. On October, we, uh, we've got first test runs of the full cycle. And in December, we, uh, we already had production scale data load. So we could load this huge amount of data uh, using only 12 servers in Replica. That's, that's not too many. By March, uh, we migrated client APIs. So it took uh, three more months to uh, rewrite our query engine to generate queries for ClickHouse. It could probably take less time, but we wrote it everything from scratch. Um, and in May, we extended the system uh, to free replicas and added more servers because we realized that performance is not enough. And in June, uh, we completed mi the migration. So it took one year, but this was a very, very complex project, uh, and we had to maintain uh, the existing business and then functionality to, exi to existing code as well. So we have two uh, or two and a half petabytes of uncompressed data to the moment, and this works just fine. Okay, a few examples of the queries from the real production system. You will be impressed, I believe me. Uh, this is uh, our huge table, which is almost one trillion of records, and uh, you can see uh, how fast ClickHouse process the data. It's 200 uh, gigabytes per second and 200 billion per second scanned in order to calculate counts. Counts is probably the most uh, easiest uh, query, but if you run this on MySQL, uh, you will be dead waiting, waiting <laughs> right? For instance, uh, this is another more complex query, uh, which is uh, use filter for the previous day. The performance is a little bit lower, but still very impressive. And here are examples of a little bit more complex queries. Uh, these are top impression, to top events by country. The performance, again, a little bit, a little bit, little bit uh, slower, but it's still in a couple of seconds range. And uh, the same query a little bit rewritten. Re uh, we uh, we could uh, we cut execution time in a half doing a, sim a simple trick. Uh, in, in, in this example, uh, we group by um, the string column, country code, and here we group by the country key without a dictionary call until we have to do the final, final path. Uh, and this is the data size. Uh, it's actually um, three replicas. And what is interesting here is compression ratio. So, uh, so ClickHouse, in this particular example, for our data, compresses data 
uh, by 16, 16, 16 times, right? So only 6% of the data uh, stored on the disk comparing to raw data size. This is why it's so fast. So today, today, if you want to migrate to ClickHouse, uh, you know what features to expect from Alexei. Um, and here's the current state. So it's one year open source, 100 known, uh, more than 100 known production installs worldwide, uh, carefully collected by Yandex. Um, there are public change logs uh, since August, and this is these are very helpful, both in Russian and English. There's a roadmap, uh, probably not very detailed, but still. Uh, ClickHouse team is now, uh, as far as I know, it's five developers and two, two more people helping from uh, other departments, for example, for GDBC and ODBC, so it's a good team. And a lot of community contribu contributions uh, from uh, people from different companies. Actu actually, community is very active. A lot of questions, a lot of answers, a lot of blog posts, uh, case studies. Uh, Cloudflare, which contributed to ClickHouse at most, uh, they wrote uh, excellent um, blog post in May, how they process one uh, million DNS transactions per second in ClickHouse. Uh, Vertimedia is another company which has huge amounts of data. They claim like 200 billion events per day in ClickHouse, more than in Yandex. Okay, and uh, if you need to, there is support by Altinity, the company that I co-founded. So, because Yandex can answer questions, but for professionals support, you will have to come to us. So, final words. Try ClickHouse. It's very, very easy. Um, it's really easy. I, I'm not kidding. If you need more info, you can always ask Yandex. If you need a uh, fast takeoff, actually we have Altinity Demo Appliance. It's a platform that helps to, to start using ClickHouse. Um, we'll probably show it after the, all, all the meetings, uh, how it looks like. Uh, so you, you have ClickHouse, uh, several uh, client uh, tools all together packaged. Uh, so you can install it as an image uh, as and, and use it on Amazon and different platforms. And uh, I think it will help you with that. <coughs> Questions? No questions? That's good. I ca uh, for all questions, I will give you a uh, small medal. I have a few additions to your talk. Let me use clicker. First about uh, dictionaries. When you optimize the query, this uh, simple trick. By the way, uh, you can uh, simply specify injective uh, attribute in your dictionary definition. And if it is specified, Clickhouse will automatically group by, not by dictionary value, but by dictionary key. So it is specifying that the function is injective. So it returns different uh, results for different arguments. Is it documented? Of course. Of course not. <laughs> of course it <laughs> is. OK. Thank you. OK, hi, uh, I'm Silvio from Fiber. Um, we do a very similar business than uh, Live Street. We are also doing RTB. We are in programmatic. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, we decided to go with Druid. I would like to understand if you evaluated Druid and why you decided to go with ClickHouse and not Druid. And um, why do you think it's better? Uh, OK, uh, that's a good question. We actually, other the years, we have related a lot of a lot of things. So if we uh, see something interesting, we uh, get it and try to, ev to evaluate. So we actually had no hopes on ClickHouse when we started evaluating that. We just took it to evaluate. But it turned out to be very good for us. And um, once we realized that it does the job, we started a migration project. So that was probably if we come to if we came to Druid first, uh, we we would uh, evaluate it as well. But I'm pretty sure that it wouldn't fit our needs. Uh, from what I from what I heard about Druid. Thank you.